this and what all that means, we're reminded that eternity is long. And for those of us who believe, according to John 3.16, it reminds us that for those who are believers, there is the gift of eternal and everlasting life with our Savior. What a wonderful comfort that is to my heart this morning. Terry, in many ways, was like a brother to me. This is a different experience. I conducted funerals for probably hundreds, maybe thousands of people now. And for my own parents, this is like losing a sibling. And yet I can do it because of the great comfort of the Holy Spirit that reminds me that Terry lived this life for God. Over and over again, as people walked through the line last night, I heard this comment, and you can almost quote it word for word. He was the greatest example of a Christian man that I ever knew. The boss of the plant who came through, that was his comment to me. His classmates, as you, some of you know, he was coming to his 40th reunion, and many of those high school classmates were here this morning. One of them wrote a note online that said this, Mary Kiro, pronouncing your name right. I lost a friend yesterday. Terry Briggs died in an auto accident. I saw him this week and we talked about his renovating the family home after a fire, how much he loved this family, how he was looking forward to seeing all of our classmates at our reunion next weekend. And our final conversation was about the joy he felt in winning some of his co-workers to the Lord and praying with them daily. What a testament to your life lived with Christ as the cornerstone. Terry sometimes struggled with the fact that he was not in a traditional role of ministry at this time and pastoring, but we all knew he had a ministry. He was there in the workplace. He taught Sunday school. He preached at different churches in the area here I know, and I've been down here, I don't know, I, Methodist, I think Baptist church one time was here when he was preaching in. And he lived his faith, most importantly. That ministry lives on for eternity. And so we feel the comfort and closeness of the Good Shepherd comforting us with who Terry was and comforting us with the fact that God is with us just as he was with him. The moment that his heart stopped beating, he went immediately into the presence of Christ, something we can't even fathom. Now you and I are breathing and we ask the question, why? I've seen the young die. I've seen sudden tragic deaths. I'm working in a hospital many years and now in a hospice setting. And every single one of us have been to that place where we've asked the question, why? The psalmist often asked why. And yet he always came back to faith. And a few years ago I was contemplating this and, you know, people want answers and I don't have all the easy answers. But the closest thing I came to my own reflections and thoughts about why why is that 20-year-old taken in a tragic accident? Why is a 57-year-old dying in a tragic accident who's a good man and a godly man? And someone else who may not be such a good person lives on. A 38-year-old man asked me, why did I have this accident trying to take care of my family? And my neck was broken. Why me and not a child molester? And I wrestled with those own questions in my spirit and I was beginning to prepare a sermon to fill in for my pastor in my home church, and God began to speak to me. It was Easter time, and I was reading through the Easter accounts, and I was struck with the story of our dear Savior, Jesus Christ. And how he walked through that experience in the Garden of Gethsemane, and Jesus came and knelt down in the Garden of Gethsemane, and he asked the same question as human beings ask. Why? How? This is painful. I don't want to go through this. If we had our choice, we would take it away. If any one of us had a choice here today, we would not want to be here. Jesus was betrayed, alone. They stripped him of his clothes and with lead-laced whips made fun of him, beat his body until he nearly died before he got to the cross and hung him there with those large nails. 
from noon until three in the afternoon, the darkness of our world. Even historians, secular historians, give us accounts of this time. And Jesus, hanging on the cross, struck me then, made a statement that brings great comfort to me. For he cried out from the depths of his spirit that same human question we all ask in these tragic deaths. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Where are you at when I am alone? If you study the, the uh, language of that verse, and you can take it back to the Old Testament and the Hebrew, which Terry would want us to talk about, it's a strong term of aloneness. It is absolutely an emptiness. And there is Jesus hung naked on the cross, ashamed and alone. At that very moment, the scriptures tell us, immediately after voicing that question that humanity has asked throughout the ages, the scriptures tell us Jesus says it is finished. And at that moment, we have the answer to human suffering. For it's God, man, Christ, who dies on a cross. And in three days is resurrected to eternal life. And the scriptures tell us, because I live, you will live also. And so the hope of human history, the answer to all suffering comes to us. In the story of a Jesus who dies on a cross. And Terry would want us to remind ourselves this morning that it is because of that Jesus who gives us salvation and hope. That through his death answers the answer of all human suffering why a man in the prime of his life would be taken by a tragic car accident. Our human explanations don't make sense. And I won't offer those easy, simplistic answers. But I will offer this, the great hope that I have, and that is that Jesus Christ, the Savior of the world, that that day he died and then the day he rose again, answers my questions ultimately in his own suffering and in his resurrection. To my inquiring heart, I find great joy in that. And at this time, I'm going to ask John to come. And we're going to sing, <coughs> he and I are going to sing a song that I really love. It's a little different version of, of an old song. But it reminds us of a glorious day.
sins far away and rising he justified freely forever and one day he's coming oh glorious day oh glorious day family, Joey wrote, if I could write a letter from heaven and send it down to you and let you know how much I care that I miss you, I'll tell you about how beautiful it is up here, the jasper walls, the streets of gold, and the crystal sea, how the sun always shines and rain I never see. I'd tell you about seeing our loved ones and the stories we told. There is no party here, we'll never grow old. I'd tell you I'm praying for you, all the ones I love so dear. I will always watch over you, and even though I'm far away, when you need me, I'll always be near. I can't send you a letter, there's no mail from above, until we meet again. Here's a great big hug, and I'm sending you all my love. Joey Hamilton, representing his family. <coughs> As we think, about that grand and glorious celebration. I've often thought what that might be like. It's all a mystery to me. Just as birth is a mystery, how God brings a little child together from seemingly nothing and creates something. I don't know how it all happened, but the scriptures tell us, and I believe by faith it's true. For the God who created us from the dust of the earth will bring us together again. And as my dad would take us on little hikes to the cemetery where so much family history was, he would sometimes say to me, can you imagine what that will be on resurrection morning when the dead in Christ rise? I don't know how that all happens, but I believe it is true. Through faith in Christ, that glorious day is coming. And those of us who believe will never be separated. Terry's already in that place rejoicing. Our journey is still here below. Our suffering is still here below. But we know that there's coming a day when our faith will become reality too. And our journey will someday end. It could be today, tomorrow, or 50 years from now. But we all will face that. And until that day, may we hold on to that hope, that glorious hope.